Hello. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this thing started. Um, my name is Arturo Suarez. I, uh, I, uh, I'm part of the product strategy team at Canonical. I lead uh, two products slash services there. I'm in charge of the training, and I'm in charge of the fully managed cloud service uh, called Bootstack, for those who uh, might, might have heard the term out there. So between those two services and my two kids, that keeps me busy 24-7. I'm going to talk to you today about hard choices in life, as, as well as in cloud. Uh, if you're here instead of um, enjoying the sun outside in beautiful Vancouver, uh, it means that you are already making or you have already made one right choice, which is to join OpenStack, to do OpenStack. This is still one more choice to be made, one decision to be taken, which is how you want to consume OpenStack. And there are several drivers to that, that according to the OpenStack Foundation survey, if you look at this, you're going to find basically some words around efficiency, money, even if it's misspelled there, we all understand what money is. So pure cost, uh, there's innovation, there's uh, agility, there's flexibility. It all can be split down into cost, choice, and time to market. OpenStack brings as, defo brings as default some of those. Ubuntu OpenStack is the way in which you can, you're going to get all of them. Let me dig into that. Pure OpenStack economics, right? We all understand uh, these things. So Bootstack price straight, $15 per server per day. We can talk about what we mentioned in the, in the first session of Mark Shuttleworth about the price per VM afterwards. But basically, 100 nodes, half a million dollars, at least 2,000 VMs, right? Let's go to the do-it-yourself way. How much does an OpenStack engineer make? Well, according to Indeed.com, in the US, average salary of an OpenStack engineer, $128,000. You're going to need four to six of these operators. That depends on how often they get sick, how often they want to you know, take a day off. But basically, four to six operators, that comes up to half a million dollars. The best scenario, it would be something like half a million dollars. So it's very compatible. All right, Bootstack makes sense for 80% of those clouds. So there are very few clouds that have actually more than 100 nodes. Okay, just pure economics. But you may say, hey, well, I want to have my team. I want to hire my team, right? And this is a picture from the previous OpenStack Design Summit in Paris. We had this window on top so we could take this picture. And guess what? They are also hiring. All of us are hiring down there, right? So you've been competing for talent with all the products, all the vendors, all the companies around OpenStack, and that makes your life easier. I mean, you can think as well, well, but I have a talented team already. Oh, sorry, there's, there's this thing about hiring the team and then training the team, right? You might know that we have these sessions like every six months with a lot of new features. All rooms uh, are, uh, are full, right? It is hard to keep them trained. It is hard to have all the latest versions of OpenStack ready and all that innovation ready and available to your customers, right? You might think, well, I have a talented team, right? This is LeBron James, four times MVP of the NBA, two times M NBA champion. Juju deploy in OpenStack, he's happy he made it. He struggled a little bit with the Neutron high availability, but he made it, right? The city of Cleveland and the Cleveland Cavaliers might want him to still be playing, he plays tonight, uh, and winning basketball games instead. So you get my point, right? You might have a, right, a good team, you might not want to allocate it to something that might not be core to your business. So we cover the cost. We're going to cover the choice, the second of those elements, right? We have something called the OpenStack Interoperability Lab, where we build 3,000 clouds a month, combination and permutation of all the vendors, all the software, all the different 
um, products or components of OpenStack to make sure that those uh, interoperate, that those are fully integrated, right? That choice, these are some of the partners we have there, and that choice is then translated into options in the hypervisor. We, uh, obviously, 80-something percent are KVM. That will change with the new introduced uh, this week, LexD uh, lighter visor, where you get 14 times the density. And Hyper-V, we're able to, do, to deliver uh, OpenStack on Hyper-V now. In terms of storage, you got Swift, you got Ceph, you got a lot of other uh, vendors coming along that have also joined our OpenStack interoperability lab. And in terms of uh, networking, this is a, a big, uh, a big uh, the, the component that's getting most uh, of the attention. We can deliver clouds, of course, with the default OpenVSwitch, but also with Juniper Contrail, Nuash, uh, from Alcatel Lucent, Metaswitch, which is a very interesting SDN, Midokura, of course, uh, PlumGrid, Cisco, and I think last time I checked, there were 14 of these SDN vendors in our OpenStack interoperability lab. Important thing to keep you competitive is time to market, which we translate into time to production OpenStack, right? So let's go through the process. You hire. We've been doing that Ross show recently. Some of you uh, we met in different cities of the world, from Seattle, Brazil, Mexico, Toronto, Tokyo, Singapore, London. Uh, I, I can't keep track of all of them, right? Constantly we've been asking people, how long does it take to build an OpenStack team? And regularly, something between four and eight months, right? And then, of course, you train them, and then you deploy, and then you got your OpenStack cloud in production, right? With a managed service, with Bootstack, we deploy in a couple of weeks, you get an OpenStack in production, and then you can hire the team, and you can train the team, right? So we turn months into an OpenStack production environment into days. Bootstack stands for build, operate, and optionally transfer your cloud. Again, we're going to introduce one of the concepts that people worry about and one of the drivers that uh, define how you choose to operate your cloud. So let me dig a little bit into that, how we build clouds, right? We have our eyes in many clouds. In fact, we are the ones that have eyes in most of the clouds, right? 55% of production environments are based on Ubuntu OpenStack. So we've learned, we've done this for four years. We have distilled our experience into a reference architecture, into a way of deploying OpenStack that accommodates not only the workloads you're thinking of right now, but the workloads you're not thinking of right now, right? Now it's a, our, our balanced reference architecture, a balanced way to deploy OpenStack will accommodate those workloads. We start to see, and this is an, again a, a sign of maturity of OpenStack, we start to see some clouds failing to be upgraded and failing to scale, right? Those initial clouds that were built two years ago, one year ago, are now starting to break because they cannot scale more. And OpenStack should be scalable or hyperscalable. We operate it completely, le all levels of support. You're going to get this very same level of support that all our main customers there get, right? So these are the guys who set our standards, high standards, right? And this is interesting. This is a very unique feature. Um, we transfer the cloud back to you. So one of the drivers, if you remember, was lock-in, right? Uh, we're not about lock-in. If you want to transfer your cloud, if you want to have your team and operate it, we don't really want, I mean, we, we can operate your cloud, we know how to do it, but ideally, when you have a team to operate your cloud, we will step back and continue to deliver all the innovation of OpenStack and all the innovation of the vendors around OpenStack to make your cloud even more successful, right? So we, we hand over the key and you start driving. We have, again, my other little product here, the training. So we will train your team. We will make sure that that transition is smooth and you, um, well, start operating it uh, from that point over. Whenever you're comfortable, we're happy to transfer the keys, right? To illustrate this, let me uh, introduce one of our uh, uh, customers. So my media, uh, CTO Michael Yoon is going to tell you about uh, what they do at My Media and how they, uh, they make the most out of their um, 
manage private cloud. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arturo. Maybe I'll just... Uh Just this one little slide. <laughs> okay, so um, okay. So um, uh, just to introduce uh, what my media is. Uh, so my name is Michael Yoon, and I uh, am the CTO of this company. It's called My Media. Uh, so at My Media, we are a company that's enabling uh, customers, enabling end users uh, to be able to rediscover uh, their digital memories. Uh, and we bring the perspective here at OpenStack of a uh, consumer, um, of a, and we're providing a production environment for a consumer cloud um, and utilizing the, the, the OpenStack platform. So we're a little bit different from many of the other uh, consumers of OpenStack because we're not providing uh, a set of uh, cloud services to tenants. Uh, we are really our own tenant. Uh, we're the own customer. We have a, a, a large application, uh, and we are uh, you know, building OpenStack so that we can use it internally for this application. We also uh, are one of these uh, you know, pretty exciting startups that are sort of on the cusp of breaking out into a, a very, very large year. Uh, we've got major, major uh, scale requirements. Uh, so uh, we have expected storage capacity uh, by the end of, uh, or within the next 12 months of about a, a, a zettabyte of data. Uh, so we're really looking uh, for a, a large amount of capacity and expansion uh, driven by both organic growth, but then also some major partners, some global partners uh, through, the, uh, through the course of the next year. Uh, and these partners are, are sort of device-based OEMs, ODMs, as well as uh, uh, telecom carriers and retail partners. So what this means is uh, we have uh, a need for, uh, obviously, uh, a large amount of infrastructure, uh, and we are uh, very much interested in choosing the right set of partners. Uh, so why do we choose Canonical? Um, so uh, there are many different reasons, uh, but three of them uh, that I'll highlight here. Uh, certainly the first and foremost is the model of engagement. Uh, so. Uh, no, no joke, uh, I met Arturo yesterday uh, for the first time in person, um, and the words that he you know, uh, sort of illustrated there are exactly one of the main reasons why we chose uh, Canonical. Uh, so the model of engagement, which is the build, operate, and transfer model, is exactly the model it is that we've been looking for. Um, so we want to focus first and foremost on our application, uh, and at the same time we have the needs to be able to build out this large set of infrastructure, and the build, operate, and transfer model is exactly the kind of thing that fits our business needs uh, at this particular time. Uh, the second thing is the breadth of Canonical's expertise, right? So not only are we utilizing Ubuntu, uh, but also uh, there are many uh, synergies, uh, not only uh, because, uh, you know, Canonical doesn't provide just Bootstack, uh, but they've got a range of things, a full set of services, including partners, uh, you know, relationships with vendors, uh, and a number of things along those lines. Uh, and then finally, uh, the embracement of uh, the culture uh, that Canonical uh, is embracing, which is really about ag agility and customization, really fits what it is that we need, right? So because we are our own customer and because we are not providing sort of a set of things, uh, 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 services for tenants, uh, an example of the types of things that we are perhaps a little bit non-standard is that we're looking to be able to deploy um, our OpenStack environment on a set of flat VLANs, right? As opposed to the traditional sort of VXLANs, things of this nature. Uh, and that's not something that most reference architectures or most sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know we know the best way of doing it and here's the way to do it. Uh, but Canonical really embraces uh, this approach of understanding what our needs are, why, uh, and then working with us closely. Um, so those kinds of things fit really, really well with an agile uh, sort of uh, philosophy and, and, the startup needs, and the needs of a startup company like ourselves. Uh, so those are the three main reasons why uh, we've chosen Canonical as a partner uh, and very happy to have done so. Uh, we are also uh, telling a bit more of our story. So if you're at all interested in uh, the story of my media and the other sort of you know, things that we're, we're uh, working through, uh, we have a talk today uh, at uh, 2.40 uh, in room 204. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Michael. Um, so one of the, of the second derivatives, let me just plug this in. All right, so one of the, of the, of the 
immediate consequences of this ability to deliver fast, to create flexible clouds, to create balanced clouds, has to do with all these choices, all these vendors, right? So we are keen to uh, deploy several times, for us it doesn't take too long, to deploy several times pretty much the same cloud, the same base infrastructure, the same hardware, the same underlying infrastructure with different SDN vendors. So you can have an SDN evaluation tool pretty much in no time. Once we have deployed once with Open vSwitch, we can redeploy that with Open Contrail with some other race. Um, it also applies to other uh, components of the stack. We have a little bit of help here. Uh, you probably have heard about Juju, our uh, universal modeling tool uh, that allows to deploy different services in different clouds and different substrates. One of those substrates is, of course, OpenStack. This is um, a Juju charm, a Juju bundle of uh, OpenStack with uh, OpenContrail, right? That's how the components of OpenContrail from Juniper. This is pretty much the same bundle, but we are leveraging here Calico from Metaswitch, a very interesting of 304 SDN. Same one with Nuage from Alcatalucent. Okay. Same one, same OpenStack, same bundle with Open Daylight. This is the way Cisco would like to deploy their, uh, their clouds, the way they actually deployed their clouds. To illustrate that again, I'm you know, happy to invite on stage uh, Gary McKenzie from Pier One, another of our, of our customers. Thank you very much. Um, so my job at Pier One is I'm a senior architect and principal responsibility at the moment is proof of concept and evaluation of cloud platforms. Now, we are a very large hosting company. Um, we have a very large network and it's very important to us when we're deploying OpenStack, one of our serious concerns is we have something which integrates well with our network, something which leverages all our network services. Um, the answer to which SDN does that best is something nobody can tell you. Um, it's very unique to each company, um, is our feeling about it certainly. And the end result of that is we need to try a lot of them. And despite being a relatively large organization for a hosting company, certainly we have a lot of resources in engineering and architecture, it's it's a lot of work to rebuild an environment repeatedly to test SDNs, and it's not always an effective use of our engineering time. Um, given that, it's using the Bootstack service has helped us speed up our testing and evaluation process there quite substantially. Um, it's been a particularly smooth process due to the level of flexibility and customizability about it. Um, as has been alluded to already, the fact that there are multiple options for really every part of it, whether it's hypervisor or storage, but particularly in the network space that Canonical are willing to build really to our needs is hugely valuable compared to some other partners who, uh, as Michael alluded to, are very much uh, in the model of this is how we do it. If you don't like that, you need to go elsewhere. Um, so that's been really quite a smooth process for us. We have also been impressed by the work Canonical have put in around Juju and turning our SDN options into charms for us so that we can see what the deployment will be like in production. That's obviously, it's a, a big deal that we can see how smooth the production deployment of these systems would be. Uh, and it gives us a lot of confidence when we're testing the systems. Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> the overview of what we're doing with it and uh, why we see it as having a lot of value for us. All right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks Gary. Um, again, with options, we also have options um, how to consume um, OpenStack. Um, These different, different models, right? So we have data center, hardware, so bundles, of the of different different components of the of the stack, right? So if you want to have a hosted cloud with uh, Bootstack, there's a white paper uh, recently released, 
we are able to deploy that in a very reasonable time um, at soft layer, um, which basically it uh, helps you get a uh, basically no no capex cloud up and running uh, with a minimum uh, small minimum commitment. One of the companies in, in, in the hardware industry that actually understood this flexibility and our reference architecture perfectly is Quanta QCT. So they're able to provide and bundle Bootstack on their Quanta hardware. They named it QuickStack, uh, and you can purchase that, the full uh, cloud in a box from them. We have Data Foundry. They will give you the whole thing, right? Their hardware, their collocation centers, their data centers in uh, Austin and Houston, Texas. Um, and we have our partners, so Agility Networks in the room, our friends from Alliance IT in the US that can help you um, not only deliver this service, but also services on top of that cloud, so migration services, et cetera, and of course our friends of Fairbanks in Europe, in the Netherlands. They're bringing this uh, bootstack uh, to, the, to their European customers. We have some others in uh, different parts of the world as well. And of course, with Juju, we're able to deploy things in what we call above the cloud, right? So if you are a hosting company, you can bundle Atomi on top of that bootstack and you have a fully functional um, hosting cloud business uh, 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 suite. Uh, we have charms for IBM software, we have charms for Microsoft software, we have charms for IMS and NFB uh, things, we have charms for uh, different monitoring tools that would go above the cloud. All of those can be bundled together in, in services by our, our partners. Uh, so I believe uh, I am standing between you and lunch. Uh, if you have any, uh, any questions at this time uh, or you want to go straight to, uh, to, the, to the nice uh, meal, uh, please go ahead. Happy to take them. All right. Thank you very much.